All right, so here we are for another episode of RC Pit Stop. And today, as you can see, I'm gonna be working on a very dirty E5 HX. Now, if you've been following the channel, you know that I ran this truck recently and uh, it was a little bit moist. The, you know, the ground was a bit wet and as you can see, it got very dirty. But I also had a bit of an accident with it where my rear shock, if I can show you here, uh, kind of came off. I'm not 100% sure that this is broken. I think the piston has just come off, but we'll soon see. As soon as I start working on it, I'll know exactly uh, what's happened to it. And of course, I'll report back and let you know uh, what was wrong. Um, now, aside from, of course, cleaning this up and fixing the truck, I do want to throw some upgrades at it, uh, at it, not just because it needs it, but because I have them and I figured, hey, why not show them off and uh, let you guys know the type of upgrades that are available out there for the E5 range. Uh, first upgrade is going to be a center diff. Uh, these trucks don't come with a center diff and I think it's a very much a worthy upgrade. I've also got a couple of sway bar kits. Now, I think I'm gonna be putting this, just one on the rear of this truck and I might save the other one for the other standard E5 truck that I have. Um, if you're not catching the model numbers for all this stuff, uh, just check the video description. I'll list all the model numbers for everything in there um, so you can um, order them if you know how to find them uh, because I know that these parts can be a little bit tricky to find uh, from Team Magic. Uh, some body posts. Now, these are the body posts themselves are actually plastic, but these little bits here are aluminium and they look kind of cool. So I figured, wait, why not throw them uh, in the truck? I've also got uh, some steering knuckles, aluminium steering knuckles. Now, I'm always a bit iffy about these aluminium steering knuckles because uh, they put a little bit of extra stress on the bearings. So I'm gonna be testing these out. I'm gonna see um, if the bearings give me any issues um, in the long run, but uh, you know, they look cool. I love the, uh, the little kind of uh, beveled edges that they put on here where you just have the, the silver coming through on the black. It looks absolutely brilliant. Well done to your magic on these. Uh, the way that these being designed. Um, now these are the retainers for the pivot poles. So these are actually aluminium, of course, in the stock one, you just get the plastic ones. Uh, so these would be handy to have. I've also got some uh, front and rear aluminium shock towers, again, with that uh, beveled edge on there. Look, they look really, really nice. I really love the aluminium upgrades on this. Nothing wrong with the shock towers as they come. Um, and of course, I've only ran the truck for a short time, so there's absolutely nothing wrong with them. But since I have them, I figured, hey, why not install them? Uh, and of course, the all important shocks. Now these are aluminum uh, threaded body shocks, uh, but of course I think they come, they still come with the standard springs. So the same soft springs that these come with. Uh, so I've actually got some hard springs. I'll put the shocks over here. Uh, so these, that's the model number there for the uh, harder springs. So I've got a couple of sets of these and I'm gonna be replacing uh, the ones that these shocks, these shocks come with. I'll be putting those ones on there. Uh, front and rear stainless steel skid plates. Uh, so the front one especially will come in really handy because the bumper kind of curves underneath the, underneath the uh, diff casing. And as you can see there, uh, this will offer some protection in case you have some you know, nose endings or some head on impacts. Uh, they will actually uh, work pretty well. Uh, and I also have this aluminum uh, chassis deck. This is the upper plate on the chassis. Uh, or chassis, as some people like to say it. Um, it is what it is, it's all spelled the same, who cares how it's said. Anyway, that goes on top. Uh, now, a couple of other things. One of them is quite important, which is of course a pinion. I've got an 11 tooth pinion here. This guy only comes with a nine tooth pinion. And as you all saw on 2S, it was actually quite slow. So hopefully now with an 11 tooth, it'll liven it up a little bit. And I also have a spur gear. This is a 42, uh, 46 tooth spur, CNC machine spur gear. Nothing wrong with my stock spur so far, uh, but if it's plastic, I'll replace it. If it's, uh, well, if it's bigger, I'll replace it. Uh, so more than likely this one's gonna go in there uh, just to add a bit of strength. And last but not least, I'm gonna be putting this little kind of mesh thing over the ESC just to protect it against any dirt because as you can see, um, at the moment, I'm in the middle of winter and even though we do have some sunny days, the ground is still very moist. So when I run my RCs, they still get quite muddy, quite a lot of dirt and whatever debris kind of kicks up and I wanna be able to protect that ESC. So, as you can see, there's a pile of parts here. There's a lot that's gonna go onto this truck, so I better get to work. I'm gonna set up my camera now for some time lapse. I'll put it in, uh, put some music over the top to kind of keep you guys entertained. At least you will see me working on the truck, which is something that I don't show very often, is me working on my RCs. 
And um, well, we'll come back maybe about halfway through and I'll let you know how things are going. And uh, I'll also let you know what happened with that shock. So uh, yeah, let's get to work. I've just paused here for a little bit because I obviously want to show you that I have cleaned the truck up. Uh, so I have washed it a little bit and uh, as you can see it's much easier to work on now without all that dirt sort of falling off it. Um, I just wanted to show you the effect that's happening to this front bumper. You can see how it's bending underneath and with every head-on impact that, that you have it kind of folds underneath here and then these screws start to come through. Uh, so that's where that stainless steel uh, skid plate comes into play and kind of prevents this from happening. But uh, that was it. I just wanted to show you exactly what um, that skid plate does and how it helps with the truck. But for now, we're going to cut back to the time lapse. So I figured I'd stop here just for a sec because I want to give you guys a bit of an update uh, on what's been going on. Uh, so I've got my center diff already mounted up on there. I didn't do kind of feel myself doing that because it's quite intimate and intricate as well. So I, you wouldn't be able to see much anyway. My hands would have been in the way. Um, so I got that done and the spare spear gear that they actually supplied is the same size as the one that comes in the truck. So this is the the spool diff that uh, comes in the truck as standard. Uh, you can use the existing spur on the diff, you just have to dismount all of this and, and pull it all apart and then use this spur gear on the diff. I'm pretty sure that that's possible to do. Um, so that's, that shouldn't be a problem, but considering that the optional spur is the same tooth count, 46 tooth, I figured I'll use the, uh, the extra one that I have. Now, as I was doing all this, I realized that I've actually got a spare steering servo and I figured, hey, why not upgrade this uh, servo as well while I'm at it? So I've already removed the stock servo that it comes with and uh, you can see that that's, that's the one that's supplied in the truck. Waterproof steering servo, Savox, of course. The only downside with this is that it is a little bit slow. It's not terrible by any means. You can definitely work with it. Um, it's totally fine, but you know, since I've got the option to do it, I figured whilst I've got everything apart, might as well update, uh, upgrade the steering servo. And the one I've decided to go for is this one here, which is a, a Trackstar uh, steering servo from Hobby King. Uh, this one model number is that guy there, which is a TS-T17HV. So this is a digital Metal Gear Callus servo. At 7.4 volts, it'll uh, have 16.5 kilograms of torque and uh, have a speed of about 0.1 seconds. So not super fast, like obviously there's some that are a little bit faster than this out there, but I think for the truck, this should be ample. And considering I've had it as spare, um, I figured, hey, why not give it a shot and throw it in here and see how it goes. I've used a different Trackstar steering servos before. I've never used this one uh, with this particular model number, so I'm very curious to see how this one's gonna go. Uh, I'm gonna throw it in here, see how it performs, and uh, show you all how it goes once I get the running video up and going. But for now, we're gonna go back to the time-lapse.
not a writer. Okay. So we're done. The E5 HX is ready to rock and roll. And as you can see by the uh, gold, or not really gold, it's more like an orangey, like a burnt orange color uh, body post sticking out of the body there. Uh, this guy is no longer a stock uh, E5 HX. I'll quickly take the body off and give you guys a bit of a glimpse inside at the finished product. Here is what it all looks like, running the 11 tooth pinion, track star steering sliver up the front, uh, five millimeter aluminum shock towers, body posts there, uh, threaded bodied aluminum shocks. Um, and what else did I change on this? Ah, the skid plates underneath, of course. There they are. The aluminum chassis plate up the top. Uh, the little mesh over the ESC also got put in there. And of course the rear sway bar kit uh, was installed in there as well. And I think that was all of the changes. Oh no, and of course, the uh, steering knuckles, the aluminium steering knuckles are in there as well, as well as some uh, up, updated um, uh, wheel hexes which now tighten on to the axle as opposed to the uh, original ones that just kind of slid into place. Uh, the problem with these is that um, every time you go to sort of take your wheels off, these just kind of fell out. They didn't really stay in there very well. And a couple of times they actually um, would come attached to the wheel. So now the hexes stay in there, the truck's all ready to go. Now, very briefly, I'm going to tell you just a couple of tricky things about doing these sorts of upgrades. Um, to change out the rear shock tower, you will need to remove the ESC because a couple of screws there that are kind of in the way. And the sway bar, the rear sway bar, is actually real tricky to do because you need to sort of take out this entire back section or at least move it out of the way. Uh, like what I did, I just undid one screw and kind of turned it out of the way. Uh, because obviously to bolt it in, um, you can see there's screws there and so forth. You need to obviously get access and you can't do that with this in the way. So a little bit tricky to do, um, but in the end, it all worked out very well. It took me a couple of nights of work uh, to do all this, um, you know, a couple of hours here and there. So uh, yeah, it, it was a fair bit of work, but I think in the end, it's all gonna be worth it and I can't wait to run it. Um, I think it'll be uh, quite a lot of fun. Now, a couple of specs. Uh, for the front shocks, I used 700 CST shock oil. For the rear, I used 800 CST shock oil from Trackstar from Hobby King. Um, I originally had 1100 in here and I had 900 in the front and it was way too heavy. This shock oil seems to be a little bit better. The, the truck does seem to you know, be very smooth and obviously when the battery is loaded in, it should work quite well. We'll see how it works. Hopefully I haven't gone too heavy still, um, but uh, yeah, I suppose when we run it, we'll find out. Now for, for the center diff, of course, the center diff was also uh, changed out. Uh, this was the original spool diff that was in the, uh, in the truck. Uh, for the diff oil, I used this one, which is uh, 300,000, um, I think it's CST as well. Anyway, it's 300,000 weight uh, diff oil. Uh, it's a little bit pasty, but um, at the same time, we're actually in winter and once the diff sort of gets a bit of work done and, and starts to wear in, the, the shock, the oil rather, should um, thin out ever so slightly. So 
we'll see how that goes and how it all works out. Uh, now finally, just one last thing before we go, the uh, shock that was originally busted on the truck, which kind of prompted this whole changeover, uh, this didn't actually break. It may look like it's broken, but it's not. Uh, there's a, a screw that holds the piston in place on the shock shaft and that screw's come off. And uh, well, that's the result there. Now, apparently this is a fairly common problem across the TM line as well as the Red Cat line. Uh, and unfortunately, if this happens to you, well, it's gonna be a little bit messy. You, you are gonna need to clean it up. And of course, you're gonna need to uh, rebuild the shock, which is what I'm going to be doing. Uh, and one last thing before I forget as well, um, the, uh, the, the shock eyelid here at the end, there's supposed to be a, a little uh, round ball that goes in there that goes onto your A-arm. Um, that is not included with new shocks, so you will need to remove the existing ones to put into the new shocks. Uh, was there anything else? No, I think that's it. Just a list of parts that I will have in the video description. These are all the tags and cardboard and everything else that I had. Um, all of this stuff will be in the video description if you want to uh, have a look and maybe pick out some of the upgrades that you want to get for yourself. But I think we are done here. Uh, I cannot wait to run this truck. I'm very much looking forward to it. Now that it's geared up, um, I'm hoping that it has a little bit more speed. It's a little bit more capable. And hopefully I won't have any issues with heating either, uh, given that I've now got the mesh on the ESC and I've geared up uh, to an 11 tooth on the motor. But we'll see how things work out. I do have a backup plan if I don't get the power and speed that I want from this truck. Uh, but we'll soon see what happens uh, once I run it. All right, that is it for me. Thank you all very much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please be sure to give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe if you're new. And as always, check out the video description for more information on the truck, all the parts, uh, now all the part numbers for the items that I've used today, as well as a link to my Facebook page. Thank you again, and I'll speak to you next time. Oh, <laughs>